Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for being there. We are here with Samuel Chong, continuing our conversation on the Thea Uba prophecy, we, uh, the book by Michel de Marquet. And um, Samuel is a translator of this book into Chinese. Oh, I, I don't think we ever got to what, what, what languages or is, are they all called? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm so ignorant. <laughs> Are they all, uh, is the word, is the correct word languages in, in China or is it uh, dialects? Is that the, the right word? Actually, uh, the written language is called the written language, which is uh, simplified Chinese in mainland China, tradition, traditional Chinese in Hong Kong and Taiwan. And the spoken language uh, is the dialects, uh, mm -hmm. which is spoken uh, in, in China, uh, which is called Mandarin. Uh, China and Taiwan, they speak Mandarin, but Hong Kong, uh, they speak Cantonese. Cantonese so, and I helped the, the book to be published uh, in both uh, simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese. So basically, the written language, uh, even though it has two, the, the simplified and the, and the traditional way, they are both the same language. Uh, the same language. Which, which the different people in different regions of China, they, they have a different accent we could maybe say, or a different way of, of, of expressing the, 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 the sounds of the language? Yes. Uh, for example, when a person from Hong Kong reads a book, mm. um, the person will read in Cantonese, even though the characters, the writings are the same. So it's very strange. <laughs> but right. So why I'm asking this is because China being so massive and so huge, uh, it's interesting that you you were you would be able to in in just one translation you can reach any Chinese person that can that can read it correct yes that's whereas right. perhaps that same uh, written translation if you were to make an audiobook you would have to make many different audiobooks well uh, actually Mandarin would be sufficient because uh, mm. uh, almost all people in China and Taiwan they speak Mandarin. And uh, nowadays, a lot of people in Hong Kong also understand Mandarin. So I think Mandarin is the language, is the, uh, mm. the lingua franca of, of China, the Chinese regions. Amazing. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so let, let me, we were, before we, we closed the first half, we were talking about, um, we were getting into, into the, the spiritual aspect of, of the teachings from the Theoba prophecies and from from Tao and the Theaubans. Mm. But now that we're speaking, I just, if, if you're comfortable, would, have you ever had a, a UFO experience or, a, or an even, even an, a, a close encounter kind of experience? And, and particularly maybe since you're in this, in, this, uh, um, in this project or in this work with the Theauba prophecy, have you ever had contact maybe telepathically or whatever with anyone like Tao or, or one of the Theobans? Uh No, I personally, I have no, I have no contact with them at all. And I have no experiences uh, being uh, contacted by them or contacting them. I try to, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not really trying to contact them for now because I know that my life purpose is to um, to send the messages to people and so that people can wake up. I know that they are entrusting me to do this kind of work. Um, and I'm trying to be more independent. Let me put that way. I want to be more independent than um, receiving their help directly. Mm, that's very good. Um, and if, what about like seeing lights in the sky or, or something like that? Have you ever had some, something like it? No, not at all. Wow. No. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic how, how um, you know, even without that kind of, of evidence or of confirmation, let's say, the message in the book has resonated so much with you that, that, you're, that that's enough for you to, to, to go ahead and, and, and help share the, the message. I think that's beautiful because uh, for me, I've had a few like supernatural experiences in my life that are hard for me to, to explain rationally. Uh, but again, my, 
my path has taken me into this area of faith, you know, and, and I, I've understood that those things that are hard to explain is because they were just for me, let's say. Uh, so like, I, I can give you an example. When I was very young, very small, I was like, maybe I think I was 10 or, or 11 around that age or 11, 12. I had this experience where I was sleeping over at a friend's house. I've told this story before on the show, so I'm gonna make a, a very short version, but I was sleeping over at a friend's house and I woke up in the middle, of, not in the middle of the night, it was already morning. I, I, I could see the sun outside, but I woke up, maybe it was like six or seven, something like that in the morning. And we were sleeping with the door open and through the door comes in a cloud of purple smoke. All right, like, a, yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. A cloud of purple smoke comes into the room. I could see like like in front of me at the right and the cloud comes in and sitting on top of the cloud with, with his arms crossed like this is a small purple genie, you know, like, like, like the genies from our imagination and, and from, from myth, very small, like tiny, like this size. And he's just with his arms closed like this. He looks at me and just looks at me for a moment, then turns around, the, the cloud of smoke turns around and he goes out of the room and and that's, that was the experience. I, I, I just laid in bed, like absolutely astonished. <laughs> and this is something that is, it's impossible, but, but it actually happened to me. I, I, I wasn't dreaming, I wasn't asleep. I wasn't uh, imagining things, at least not in the traditional sense, you know, because mm -hmm. in the end, so, something that, I, that I've learned from that experience uh, through time and through reflecting on it, is that we or I or we ourselves, we are so much more than we think. We are so much more than just our physical and material body. We are so much more than just this shape over here and the other shapes over there have nothing to do with us. This, this experience showed me how much we are, our true self is capable of manifesting in the world in, in, in ways that we don't, don't even imagine uh, the, this, this irrational ability, this spiritual ability that we have to, to appear outside of what we think of ourselves. It's like one of the, the, the ways that I've found to express this is that we are living two lives at the same time. One is what we might see as the first person experience. So looking through our own eyes at the world, looking and seeing our own hands, the microphone, the computer. Uh, and then there's this kind of other, which would be the, the spiritual um, life and experience we are living, which would be more like the witness, the observer. Um, I, I, sometimes I call it like the third person experience where it's like this thing that is outside of time. That's why I was interested in, the, in that parallel universe at the beginning of the book. Something that is outside of time, looking at our lives from a, from a, a broader you know, perspective. And this, this part of us has different possibilities of influencing our, our first person life. And I think that part of me is what let's say caused this genie to appear because there is something that was transmitted to me some knowledge or or understanding of what life is through that experience even without words you know the genie didn't say anything it just looked at me and kind of like made eye contact so like like saying here i am i exist <laughs> and and just uh, leaving the, the rest of the mystery just open so we, we are talking about the spiritual aspect and that's why I bring up this possibility and, and I wanted to know about your own um, supernatural experiences to see like uh, what, what may, may have moved you to, mm. to, to, to want to share more about this book. You, you may have, uh, maybe now that, I, that I'm sharing this story, maybe something else has, has, may have come up for you, like some kind of intuition or some some sense of knowing, some, some, uh, some, 
some DAO, right? DAO meaning the, the way, some, something that, that moves you in, in internally to, to connect and, and share this information. Yes, uh, this book uh, talks about higher self. Like uh, besides the physical body, we all have a uh, astral body, astral body, which is the spiritual body. And the spiritual body connects with our higher self, which is uh, overseeing, overseeing us, our daily activities. So we send messages or experiences daily or, or instantaneously to our higher self who uh, that um, gets all the information, all our learning experiences, and then uh, reports back to uh, upper level of higher self. So what uh, we do here uh, is actually accumu accumulation of our learning experiences. And before we uh, were born, before we are born, we actually had a chance to preview our lives, our lifetimes. This is like seeing a film what we are going to be doing in the lifetime. So, and then we determine whether to go to be born or not to be born, go to choose to be born in this lifetime or not to choose to be born in this lifetime. And then I came, I, be, I, I decided to, to be born and uh, to, to take the advantage, to take the challenges that I'm gonna be facing in my lifetime. I had this kind of uh, impression or memory that I really wanted to save the world, uh, in in a more uh, in the sense that to spread the knowledge and to let everyone to know what is really going on, what really needs to be done. Uh, I, in in my memory, I thought this was going to be a very easy job because uh, to me, a lot of the spiritual knowledge seemed to be very apparent. For example, if um, if I if someone says to me that there's a reincarnation, it resonates to my mind. If someone, for example, says, follow the advice of uh, Anthony Williams, a medical medium, which teaches how to eat a more, in a more healthy way uh, and how the diseases uh, come about, um, his messages resonate uh, to my knowledge, uh, my internal knowledge. So I thought that to be a very easy, that, that should be a very easy job to do. But nowadays I find that uh, it is, uh, it is uh, easy, but not that easy because a lot of people, they don't receive the message as well. They don't have the reception. They don't have the intuition. They don't have the common sense to know what is really going on. For example, a lot of people, like I go to a church, there's a doctor in my church fellowship. And he really, really follows the advice of the government, the uh, health agencies. And just uh, uh, even if he were shown the evidence that mm -hmm. this thing doesn't work, this thing has a lot of uh, side effects, he wouldn't accept that. So this is just like an analogy. A lot of people just wouldn't accept that there's reincarnation. They wouldn't accept the fact that the Bible was uh, kind of uh, distorted by the people who wrote it, the, the councils of the Catholic church. They wouldn't accept that, uh, uh, that there may be some kind of um, um, ultra motive intentions by the Catholic church councils to, to remove the concept of reincarnation from the Bible. Um, so, so I think that this is gonna be a challenge for me, but I'm uh, well positioned to take the challenges and to communicate with uh, my inner self, my higher self, and to really uh, do the best I can in this lifetime. Yeah, you see, that's again, that thing, we, we separate all of the things. So when I asked you about the, the UFO thing, uh, no, I haven't seen anyone. And, and I was thinking, well, but, but he must have some, some inner knowing or some inner resonance with, with this information that maybe, maybe seems uh, like different from seeing a UFO. So, so uh, it, it didn't come, come up at, at the moment, but um, it's, it's definitely so that many people are not in, in, a, very, in a very open and direct connection with their, with their higher self, which sometimes maybe 
could be called also the unconscious mind or the subconscious mind um, with with God with with the Tao you know that that just sense of this is the right way for me right now uh, and 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 I'm happy also that you mentioned the medical medium I, I will, I'm very much looking forward to to having him on the show I don't know how how lucky I'm gonna be I, I haven't even sent an invitation yet because I'm I'm mustering up the the, the courage and the, the belief that that I'm gonna be able to have him on the show but I would love to because I, I've tried some of his of his advice and, and it's been very beautiful for me like feeling a lot better eating and trying a, a particular one of the, the diets that he that he mentions in one of his books and, and I've always been very similar to what you were mentioning. I've always been not so much when I was younger, but still very much in contact with my with my intuition. You know, um, maybe I've always been a little bit more in contact with my intuition that 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 the norm of of, of people perhaps. But nowadays I'm even more connected, um, and. And th there's messages and stuff, you know, that I read or that I hear. Uh, and like I was mentioning on the uh, about the, the the Bigfoot, right? You know, when I heard that stuff about it possibly being kind of uh, UFO technology, uh, interdimensional stuff, that kind of resonated with me. And and it, I felt maybe I could describe it like sometimes when you're connecting with this, it feels kind of like joy or like excitement. It feels like, oh, this is right. You know how when, when you're doing something you shouldn't, you know inside yourself, it's, there's like this dissonance and you're like, ah, there's something inside you that doesn't want to. And when you're doing what, what is right for you, there is an opposite feeling to that, a kind of bliss or excitement or, or, uh, 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 wanting to to know more about the thing Th that is just me trying to describe this feeling which is just impossible really to describe because it's very personal but I'm, I'm similar to you in that way you know this connection with 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 what resonates and it's also very important you know to to not always be like black and white and be like Okay, so this one thing I don't resonate with, so I'm going to throw out everything. But actually be like, okay, this one thing I do resonate with, okay, I'm going to keep this thing, you know? So maybe people are, are hearing about this story and um, the Theoba story, and, and they feel like, ah, giant uh, Nordic uh, uh, hermaphrodite aliens. No, okay, next. Uh, I'm, subs <laughs> I'm subscribed. I'm going to another channel. But maybe, okay, that, if that seems uh, too much, that's all right. There is no, there's no reason to, to believe anything or to accept everything. But maybe within the, the book and within what, what Samuel is, is sharing and, and what we're talking about, maybe there is something that feels true in, inside of people. And so I, I, I'm inviting people to connect with that. If there is something that, that you kind of feel, oh, this is interesting, Okay, continue listening uh, if you want to and, and see and continue researching and get the book and read the book and see what maybe other different parts uh, resonate with you uh, and, and allow that information to, to, um, to marinate inside and to, and to, and to kind of um, to, to grow you know, within you and, and, and to grow you, to grow you, to, to help you become more of, of who you are because in the end you know whether we do or we don't resonate with something we learn from everything like you someone were saying before we are in an experience um ah, i'm sorry i forget the the phrase you said it was very beautiful but our planet is a, a planet of experience of learning and so from either what we do and what we don't resonate with we are still learning so it's very important to to be open to receive new information and then use your discernment to to say this information i'm comfortable with this one not so much okay i'm gonna take that away and keep the things that i do like yes exactly um 
I actually I read a lot of uh, spiritual books, a lot of uh, scientific books too. And I find this book to be extremely interesting because it has a lot of foundations. Uh, it's spiritual, but it has a lot of foundations too. So um, there are two, like in my mind, there are two types of uh, people or, or, or two types of books. One is a, it's a group of people that uh, um, just don't believe anything spiritual. They just, um, uh, they're, they're really dogmatic about uh, scientific research and studies. So they don't believe uh, ETs unless uh, the ETs are shown to them. They don't believe anything about uh, the human energy field or the auras. They don't believe uh, reincarnation or, or even like uh, um, hypnosis or past life regression. And, and uh, I think uh, this group of people are just, uh, uh, they, they are not uh, yet ready for the messages. And there are also other group of people that are so spiritual that they, they're um, like, they, they, they tend to um, like work and maybe just to act as if uh, there's no reality of this world. So they don't go into what's really going on in world politics. They don't really care about money. They don't care about uh, like uh, how to, how to, in a sense, how to act in a more, navigate the whole political or economic system and to make this world uh, or change the world system. So, so I think uh, I'm, I'm the kind of person in the middle. So I study, uh, my major in, in college was economics. At that time, I really wanted to make a lot of money. So I really wanted to find out what's really going on behind, behind the world politics. Mm -hmm. So I'm really like a realistic in the sense that I really want to navigate the world political system or economic system and to find out who is really running behind, who is really like uh, running the show behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to um, like convey the messages to those good of, group of people that they need to become more spiritual and they need to really uh, focus on the, the livelihood of the people, the, the public, and not to be so selfish. On the other hand, I'm also um, kind of uh, spiritual in a way that I'm doing everything possible using my, my connections and also my advantage of being a Chinese translator interpreter to uh, spread the knowledge to people in, the, in different industries. As a Chinese uh, translator interpreter, I get to work in different industries, mostly attorneys, but also other fields too, like the manufacturing this, uh, industry and also entertainment industry and also like other different industries. So I think I'm in a very unique position to, to, uh, to contact, to have connections with people from different fields. So I, I think I'm going to be keep doing that in the future. Yeah, I think one of, one of the, the very important roles of a translator is, is working as a bridge, you know, and, and, and you know, the, this person speaks in a way, this person speaks in another, and, and earlier I said lots of the conflict that, that's going on in the world is misunderstanding between people, and translators can, can step into the middle of that, and, or, or, or maybe from outside, just not to get caught in the, in the middle of the thing, but from outside they can, they can communicate um, uh, something that helps those, those two sides understand each other better, and then this can be replicated all over the place so it's it's nice that that like you mentioned and i feel the same way as being in the middle you know i am very incredulous and at the, and at the same time when it resonates i i just know it you know even if it's something that is very improbable you know i used to be even more critical of that like i was saying when i was younger um, and something that was irrational you know it was a lot harder for me to to connect with with that resonance within so uh, with, with time i've i've learned and i've practiced that and i and i'm more able to discern between what's what's true for me and what's not mm, and and being in the middle you know people who are very dogmatic with with the scientific religion of of today and people who are very very um uh, against 
looking at, at, the, at the material reality of the world. You know, for example, uh, the, the side of the, of the very uh, scientifically orthodox people, they would discredit, like you've said, the auras or the, or the human energy field. But if you told them that through a, through a, a cable that you run electricity, uh, an electromagnetic field is, is uh, generated around it, they wouldn't doubt it. You could even show them with a, with a magnet and they could see it and they would accept it. But then if you weren't and took uh, the next step, you could say, okay, so this happens in a cable. Now look at the human body, look at the nervous system. It's a collection of lots of cables that are running electricity constantly. So how, how far is it from, from the cable generating an invisible magnetic field that the human nervous system is generating an electromagnetic field around it. And, and ideas like that, I think, would start to, to shift people into, into being more open to, to this stuff. Before, you know, I, I would hear or read about chakras, and even though it did resonate, it felt kind of very, very distant for me. I wasn't quite able to, to connect with that information. So for a lot of time, I just left it alone, until I met my personal uh, spiritual master or spiritual teacher, who is actually from Taiwan. And I actually, this is another connection that I have with you and why I resonate with you, uh, is that I actually, uh, I worked with him uh, as a translator and interpreter. I don't speak Chinese, like, like I told you before, but he did speak Spanish, but he didn't speak English. And he needed interpretation in, in that in that area, in Spanish and English, going back and forth. So I, I helped him with that and, and it was a great experience. You know, I lived with him for a very long time and, and during the, the, the work as a translator, I was basically just translating and interpreting, but I was also observing and absorbing and learning from his way of being in the world. Uh, his, his, a Chinese medicine doctor, he's an engineer and he's a Taoist as well. Um, and, and I learned so much from just how he is, you know, how he is in the world, how he interacts with people, how he knows when to, when to, to speak or when to, when to be quiet, what the, the right moment, the right word. Um, and, and this this was such a beautiful experience for me, and it helped me continue to develop this intuition and this beautiful spiritual side of life, which I'm, I'm so thankful for having uh, started this journey. And, and what I'm trying to say is that for, for those people who are very much on one side or the other, trying to, to find that common ground, that middle ground, slowly trying to see, okay, if you're against, against money, against politics, against the material reality of life or the material illusion perhaps, okay, yeah, but when, when the light, uh, when, when the, um, the utilities bill comes, you're gonna need the money for it. Or when, when your tummy is rumbling, if you're living in a city, unless you are, uh, self-sustainable with, with growing your own food. When that stuff comes, uh, you need to, to, to find uh, a supermarket and, and get your food. Or when, when the prices go up and it's hard for you to, to live comfortably, that's connected to politics and to, to the, the, the beliefs of the people that are arguing in politics. So, okay, how can we start to, to polish our own selves in order to uh, reflect and be an example for others. Just like my teacher was for me, he, he didn't necessarily tell me uh, what, I had to, what I had to do, but actually he was present in the world in a certain way that emanated an electromagnetic field around him that created changes all around him. And in myself particularly, it showed me, you know, how an, an example of how one can be in life and not just how we've always been taught that people should be in the world, which is a, a way that has led to so much conflict. <laughs> yes, uh, 
speaking of uh, conflicts and uh, I know this is a little bit uh, off topic, but from my research, I really do think that uh, a lot of the world conflicts are caused by a small group of people who benefit from wars, like from, from the military um, equipment or maybe uh, some of the weapons. So I think uh, it's very interesting how the world is going right now. And uh, I, I, but I do believe in the power of prayers and also power of uh, meditation. And uh, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, do the best I can to help around and to uh, to live the best um, I, the best I can in this world. And I really really appreciate uh, everything that you have been doing to spread the knowledge and to invite different speakers. And um, I I think uh, we have to get together to act together and to make this world a better world. Yes, definitely. Um, we, we have the opportunity, you know, the chance to, to speak with people very, very far away from us. You know, maybe we didn't have this chance when we were growing up. You know, we had only the, the opportunity to speak with, with those around us. And maybe we were the only one in our town or in our city that we knew that, that uh, was interested in all of this or, or that could have a, a, a similar perspective with whom to to grow together in, in this spiritual side. But now we have tools like what we are using right now to communicate uh, between very large distances. And so I think that we need to, to embrace all of this, you know, and like for me, I, I see your point, you know, of, of a certain group of people being uh, benefiting from from the negativity that's that's going on in the world. And this is completely understandable that this probably has always existed. Uh, I, what we might call a, a group or, or different groups that have uh, evolved through time or changed its members perhaps. And, and I see it mainly as a kind of a way of thinking, a kind of a type of mentality, um, a group of, of beliefs and so this, I guess my point is, even though that exists, that's like undeniable that, that it exists. I always wonder how, how much, how much of our energy should be directed straight at that and how much it should be pointed a little bit like uh, to the side, you know, like it's sometimes they, they, they say like, if you look directly into the eyes of the thing, uh, it's one thing, but if, if you like, sometimes, sometimes you, you do, so my, my main point, I, I value very much that you, that you whatever uh, strategy you are choosing to, to um, to, to use in, in the world in, in, a, in expanding and, and helping the evolution in, in consciousness, because I believe all the different strategies are valuable and, use, and useful and valid. And I wonder sometimes, for me, it, it's been a, a big challenge for some time, you know, I was, this, I'm not saying this is your, your case, it was for me, I was very focused, you know, on conspiracies. And I eventually, I understood that I personally was dedicating too much of my attention, too much of my time into those areas, right? And slowly I've started moving more towards the self-development and more towards the spirituality. And I'm still aware of, of things going on in the world, but I'm personally, and I think like you were speaking before, this search of, of the balance of the middle, the middle ground, the, the middle way, uh, this is a, is a very a very personal thing, you know. What is for me the the middle path is not necessarily the same for you or for the other person, but it's a a question that is very beautiful that we ask ourselves along the path because we as humans or whatever we tend to kind of go a little bit too much to one side or to another, 
you know this this is what eventually got uh, perhaps Lemuria destroyed or what got Atlantis destroyed what got I don't know who knows Mars or, or if there were civilizations on Mars destroyed this too much of one mentality to the detriment of the other and this is what we are going through today this reawakening of the feminine I guess and again this comes with 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 the, the, the main theme of the hermaphroditism uh, represented in Tao and, and that name connecting to, to the Tao. Mm, I think this is a very, very beautiful point. The, what is the middle path and the middle, the middle path for each one of us? Yeah, the book actually gives the solution. So oh, what's cute it, about the book? Yes. I mean, you probably haven't read that part yet, but uh, the solution is uh, uh, the awareness by the public and the public that acts together mm -hmm. in a concerted way um, to have nonviolent resistance. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, what Gandhi did in India. We uh, can, the, the poor people, we act together to have a strike. So if you think about it, we would lose very little, but the power that are controlling the world uh, are going to lose very big, big time. So if we act in a nonviolent way to resist the power that's controlling the world, then we are going to succeed. This is uh, illustrated by, by the book, uh, so I would uh, just leave it to the uh, audience and viewers to, to read the book to find out more. It really also uh, comes to another point that which I'm going to make is that um, I, for some reason, um, stumbled, stumbled up another book, which I translated from German into English. The title of the book is uh, 334 Thousand Lies, like 334 not percent, but thousands lies. So it's a book that's supposedly to be an autobiography of uh, the highest chair of a secret society that started in Germany. Um, according to this book, which I find to be uh, really interesting, the people at higher levels of that secret society have supernatural powers supernatural abilities such as um, they can read auras, they can levitate, they can also perform certain magic, the real magic. And uh, they can do a lot of uh, damaging things. But what they're afraid of is they're, they're, they're afraid of the power of the people. So when we act together, they're afraid of us. So no matter how powerful, how supernatural, power, how much supernatural power they have, they're afraid of the people getting together uh, in a uniform, uh, in a concerted way against uh, their evil deeds. So I think um, this is very important for us to let as many people know as possible uh, the power that they have, what kind of things are, are happening around the world and how to how to react and how to help each other out. And staying connected with this middle path, I think is very important for, for when we're trying to act together because one of, the, one of the pitfalls is thinking that we are acting together when we are actually not. Um, and, and I think this happens very much in, in, in society where, where if, if people are more in tune with their own selves and their own intuition, it will be easier to recognize when they are uh, being tried, when, when they are being uh, man tried to be manipulated. When, when <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to find how to say this. When, when, when there is some kind of manipulation attempts going, uh, if people are not in tune with this other side of ourselves, we are easier to manipulate. And the, the best way to manipulate somebody that wants to, to act together is to make them think 
that uh, something that is not acting together is acting together. So I love that that idea of the answer that, that the book gives is the awakening of the people, the working together and the nonviolent resistance. And I would, I would also add this idea of, okay, sure, let's do that, but let's make sure that we are doing exactly that and that we are not confused uh, and doing something different thinking that we're doing that, don't you think? Yes, I agree, absolutely, yes. Mm. That is like the, 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 one, uh, the one pitfall that we need to look at, that to make sure every step that we take that we are actually uh, taking the step we think we are because we are so, so so beautiful you know you are so beautiful i am so beautiful all of humanity we have this this desire for peace this desire for uh, equality for unity for being together for for growth and expansion and for knowledge and for love and for togetherness and you know, having people like you on, uh, I, I think it's beautiful in, in particular because I, I love to, to, to hear, you know, more about this, um, this, this dark side of, of the world and to see how I can respond, you know, and, and find and practice even my, my own way of, of responding to that because I'm very aware that of the possibility and, and the the, the existence of, of the negative energy in, in, in the world. And I'm also at the same time very aware that even though it's not something that I would or that we, we should choose, it's actually something that like the hard experiences in life, it teaches us something as well. It's not just, okay, ah, we must destroy the evil ones because that would just perpetuate the energy that, that feeds that negativity. So. I love uh, trying to, to look at all these ideas and think, how can we uh, polish our own mirror, our own hearts? How can we purify our own intentions in order to actually achieve the goals that we, that we are looking for in order to manifest the life that we want, the desires that we, that we, are, um, that we are trying to, to bring into, into awareness and into each, each of our lives? Yes, and I think uh, this is the reason why I'm promoting this book um, and to the public and to let other people, let the public know about the uh, possibilities and also the knowledge contained in the book. It's a very dense book. It contains a lot of information, interesting information, verifiable information that's uh, far advanced our times. Like, I will say that if you really have the opportunity to read it, you're going to discover that this is going to be the best investment you have ever made. This book is unique, it's special, and I strongly encourage everyone to read it. That's a, a very beautiful uh, way of, of summing up the, 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 the book. Um, I, I mean, again, I, I haven't completely read it, but I mean, uh, your, your enthusiasm for it it's beautiful and, and the way you just encapsulated what it kind of means for you, you know, that, that you think it's a great investment for anyone to, to, to check it out and to read it. And, and I invite people to go ahead and, and, and get the book and read it, see for yourself what, what there is there that, that resonates, what, what doesn't. And then with time, come back to the book and see what resonates then and what doesn't then and, and see how, how, your your repeated uh, interactions with this book or with whatever how it reflects your own growth you know how oh wow you know I used to think this part was wasn't uh, I didn't resonate with this but today I read it again and through whatever else I've I've grown through this time uh, this now makes a little bit more sense and and that's a very a very important part of of developing discernment is knowing that okay today something doesn't resonate but maybe tomorrow it will and not just because today it doesn't resonate i'm going to throw it out forever mm. and i don't know um 
I, I really want to respect your time. I know we are a little bit past the, the top of the hour, but if we could get a, a few more minutes of your time, um, you mentioned that the book also talks about the Akashic Records, and I would like to know a little bit of what, what your takeaway from, from perhaps those sections of the book is. Akashic Record records everything that happens on a planet. It is more like a cocoon that rotates seven times the speed of light around the planet. Yeah. So if a person can match the uh, vibrations of the Akashic record, the cocoon, then the person will be able to access all that's recorded in the history. The author of the book, Michel de Marquet, was actually shown the destruction of the continent of uh, Lemuria. So he actually went inside and experienced what it was like at that time. So it was said that uh, some people on earth with practice could access the Akashic records mm -hmm. and to learn about what happened in the past. I personally believe that there are people who really did so, such as uh, Edgar Casey and also um, others with practice. There is a person named uh, James Churchward, who wrote the book on the continent of Lemuria. And I believe that uh, he wrote about a monk in a temple in India who was able to access the Akashic records. And I do believe that there are people who really have the ability to do so. It's amazing. Yeah, I actually work with, with reading Akashic records uh, in, in sessions for people. And for me, discovering that was like so beautiful, discovering how to connect with that. And especially when through readings, you start getting confirmations, you know, like you mentioned in the book, the book having certain uh, facts that can be uh, uh, confirmed outside of, of the book. There, I, I, I already shared the story, but there was this reading that was one of the times that I got this big confirmation when I was talking to a person about a former partner of theirs. And at some point I got a name from, from the records and I was like, no, nah, I think this is impossible that I got a, a name. I was like very, very shy until at, at a certain point after we continued speaking uh, with, with, with this client, I, I, I got, uh, I, I trusted myself and, and the information enough because of all the other things that were coming up. I trusted it so much that I was like, okay, can I tell you one thing? I'm getting this name. And she told me, oh, that's the name of my, my former partner. <laughs> you know, and those kinds yeah. of confirmations. And it wasn't just a, a regular name. It was a very specific name. So those types of things, you know, give you, again, these kinds of uh, supernatural confirmations to yourself that you are on the right path. That, that what you are uh, interacting with is actually something valid, real, true. And the Akashic Records is, is, a, very, it's, it's, it's a very unique unique practice, you know, reading those for yourself, you know, to get, to get information about where you're at uh, and, and to then be able to share that with people who are trying to find their place in the world, trying to to understand why they feel so confused or, or maybe what's the next step that they can take or, or maybe to understand your own past and see with different eyes, you know, the, the guides that, that, that are with you when, when you're doing this reading, they have very interesting perspectives on things, you know, the same event that you might look one way, they can see it in a different light and, and give you something more from from the same thing that really helps you grow and and for me that that has been a very important part of my own path that's why i was very interested to to get a little glimpse of of what the theoga prophecy also uh, mentions about it when you when you said that it was included in the book yes yes uh, let me know what you think about it after you finish reading the entire book it's really going to be very interesting for you yeah how long is it because i have I, I have it on my, on my, what's it called? My, my book app on the phone. And it just says like number of, of, of clicks, let's say until the end. But I, I don't know how many pages it, it has. How, how many pages is it? 
Well, for the uh, paper version, the paperback version is a little bit under 200 pages. Oh, it's very, it's very readable. It's very readable. Very readable. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. People just need to, yeah, to, well, I mean, first of all, if, if people resonate with the book, just go ahead and find it. Uh, and, and, and yeah, and, and look at it, I don't know. Um, for me, you know, there's been several books that have marked my life and uh, I, I'm a, a kind of reader that I go like in, in little chunks and then I take a, a really long time to kind of digest and then I can come back to a book and continue. And, and I, I've learned so much from, from books that I still haven't finished reading in, in maybe years since I started them. Mm -hmm. But uh, this one was very, very, very interesting in, in how it's written. You know, it's like, at least at the start, it's very, it's kind of light, a light kind of reading. You know, he's just mm -hmm. talking with Tao back and forth. He feels very comfortable with her. There is not this element of like uh, feeling unsafe with her. So it's more like a, a kind of like a, a guardian angel that's taking him by the hand and, and showing him uh, certain uh, certain information and and so I, I really I really liked it and I invite people to check it out. Um, so as as we are winding down, uh, Samuel, I'm very very honored and very thankful for your participation here for for coming here and and sharing everything that you did today. Uh, it's really nice to continue meeting people from all around the world um, and to continue recognizing you know that we are that we are, we are not alone you know in in thinking this way in being interested in these subjects uh, for a long time it seemed like that 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 we we were just a, a crazy bunch of, <laughs> a crazy few but nowadays more and more people are beginning to to connect with with the the hidden and the, and the secret side of, of reality which is nothing but our own selves. It's nothing but those parts of ourselves that we have been um, having a, a hard time accepting and integrating, but it's a part of ourselves that is also very magical and very transcendental. And, and that's where most of the meaning in life, I believe, resides. And at, at the very least, it's where most of the meaning that we are missing resides. So I thank you extremely deeply for, for sharing this information that can help people, uh, can help them ignite a kind of uh, interest into looking and researching even deeper into who they are, into what their role here and how they can help the whole collective to, to, to bring more peace and, and more love into, into the planet. And, and mm -hmm. Yeah, you're doing a, an amazing job in, in sharing this. Uh, it's a book that is not as known uh, as, as perhaps others, but yeah. that it, it really looks as if it has some, some very empowering information and very uh, enlightening information. So I'm really, really thankful for you again to be here and, uh, and for the opportunity to, to help share this information with other people. Would you like to, to, to say some, some closing words? Oh, and actually I have one final question after, after you, you speak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just hope everyone can get the book and read it and, and let me know what you think about it. I actually have also have a scholarship uh, for people who write an article, write a review on the book. Mm, you can write that in uh, either English, Spanish or Chinese. And it's every year I give out a thousand dollars to the winner. Wow, that's great. <laughs> okay, so my question, it's a, it's a question that I'm, I'm asking all the, all the guests and I started doing this very recently. That's why I almost forgot. But my question to you is, what is the one thing that brought you to where you are? I mean, this book, for sure, uh, the discovery of this book and also the content of the book. Um, if it were not for this book, I would have been still doing my um, my uh, mundane work <laughs> without anything uh, near similar to what I'm doing right now. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's that's great. So 
Um, all right, I, I'm having a hard time closing because I, I feel I feel like we, we could talk a little bit, uh, we could talk a lot more about all of this, but again, I'm so thankful for your time. And um, this has been a, a great a great chat. I really liked uh, connecting with you and, and getting to know you and, and all, all the message that you're sharing. So um, everybody, thank you so much also for being over there on the other side. This is definitely uh, a group a group effort that we're all doing, you know, I, I talk with, with Samuel, Samuel talks with me, you guys listen or watch over there, and uh, we each help each other. Uh, it's, um, you know, we sometimes feel like this separation between things like, oh, the, the, the podcast, but there would be no podcast without an audience. Uh, there would be no, 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 no work done <laughs> without people to, to receive that. And so I'm again, as thankful as I am to Samuel, I'm also thankful to the audience over there. Um, I wish to, to invite you guys to write me and message me on Instagram at Atman Rafa, altogether one word um, on Instagram. And uh, also I invite you guys to join the Patreon where we can uh, have access to lots of exclusive content. And Samuel, if you would like to share your website one more time, and also I'll have links to all of this uh, down below. Okay, my website is chinasona.org slash Theouba, that's T-H-I-A-O-O-U-B-A, -O -O T as in capital letter T, uh, that's my website. Very nice. Um, so, all right, it's really, <laughs> I'm really having a, a great time just, just sharing space with you, Samuel, but uh, as all good things and as everything else, yeah, things come to, a, come to an end. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to say goodbye and thank you so much for your time. I hope we can get together one more time to continue exploring the ideas in the book and to continue uh, exploring your own ideas and and uh, and getting to know each other a little bit more. All right. Great, great. Uh, I'll be great, great. Let me know when you want me to be here on your show again. Sure, of course. Let's stay in contact. All right, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much. Continue uh, sharing all the love that you've been sharing with uh, the people that you that you cross in the street. Give a smile to somebody. Hold the door for somebody. Just say hello and thank you and all right bye bye everybody bye bye